and welcome everybody in Twitch chat and all the people watching this later on YouTube as well for another edition of Jund Midrange. We played this deck a couple days ago um, as a donation deck and um, and then talked about at the end of the the uh, stream or league or whatever at the end of the time of us playing it. Talked about some changes that I uh, would think would kind of be good for the deck. And that's what we have here. So we have kind of an updated version that was donated again to play. So um, the biggest thing is we don't have the Vampire Sovereigns anymore that we had before. Beauty Zebra, nine months. Um, <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you so much, Beauty Zebra. Oh, you still don't have two. Oh, I still need two more Noble Hierarchs. Man, I have this. I have like a ni Noble Hierarch right here that I got from like an RPTQ that I don't. I don't even use. I wish I wish you were here, Beauty Zebra. I could just give you this noble hierarch. It'd be easy. But um, yeah. So thanks for that that resub there. Uh, let's see. That puts us at sub number one on the day. Anyway, um, yeah. Last time last time I was like pretty impressed with Ravager Worm. Um, Vampire Sovereign was like the the a card that we had as like a, a five drop that we've kind of. Uh, moved around we got a rekindling an extra rekindling phoenix in there instead another land um hey intellibeam with the twitch prime sub where's my hypo it's, there we go thanks intellibeam um so yeah let's let's try out some jund yet again jund midrange see if we can Win five before we lose two. All right, that gets to two subs on the day and 90 subs till the next 12 hour stream. Another way that we're doing a 12 hour stream is whenever we get to 1500 YouTube subscribers. If you ever miss any of the, um, any of the videos and you, uh, you want to see what happened? Make sure you check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C slash Todd Stevens MTG. Hey, what's up, Gatsby? Hope you're having a good Thursday. We got the NBA trade deadline. I th think about an hour away. I'm not sure exactly like what time, you know, the actual deadline is. I'm, I'm hoping my Dallas Mavs make another move. Uh, they've already had a couple huge moves here at the deadline, picking up Kristaps Porzingis and then Swamp Swamp. Seeing a graveyard. Um, and then shipping out Harrison Barnes. The thing is, like, the, the maps have a lot of cap room this year that, you know, like... Like, so I think, like, the maps could be, like, just... Like, they have a, a lot of cap room for this year, and they also have a huge trade exception. Um, so they could be like a third team in, in the deadline, um, where, uh, <laughs> I don't think the Lakers got Anthony Davis. Um, they could be like the third, a third team in the deadline to like help out, uh, two other teams because like all the cap space they have. And so maybe they can turn that cap space they have right now into some other asset, uh, like maybe like some draft picks or something. And so that's what I'm kind of hoping that that happens. Yeah, they got two players for Barnes, but I don't think... One of them I don't think is playing at all. Ooh, that's a good card. Uh, Zach Randolph, I don't think he'll ever play for him. He hasn't played at all this year. Yeah, Doncic and Porzingis are like Nash and Nowitzki version 2. 2.0. Yeah, it's, it's so exciting. I can't wait for next year. Yeah, Justin Jackson's pretty interesting. I could see him... Kind of being like another Dorian Finney-Smith type. Everyone is expendable, except me. <laughs> the All-Star Flare cash considerations. I could. That, that's what they have like a lot of basically right now is cash, cash considerations. 
But yeah, good good time to be a Mass fan right now, for sure. So what's our opponent doing? So they're playing like, so I guess Sultai mid range, or sorry, not Sultai, sorry, Demir uh, mid range. Um. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing over there. <laughs> yeah, they kind of are doing nothing. Hmm. Alright, so I did put in the, the tap land. So I don't get to have Contempt up right here, which is kind of annoying. So I'm going to be trophying. But the good part about Trophy in this scenario is that our, our opponent's surveilling four. So presumably putting a card that they want on top, which, yeah, they, they put three lands over here. They kept a card. So presumably they'll now have to shuffle that card away if they want the extra land. So... So, I don't know why I'm using that word presumably so much, but... Yeah, so now they... they that Surveil 4 just kind of didn't help them out, because they just... Shuffled that card away. No, I didn't see Saffron's Reactive, Rakdos Captive Audience deck. Yeah, that's, that's the kind of card that... You know, it's an expensive card, and it's vulnerable to enchantment removal, but it's, it's sure powerful. If it just sticks out for three turns... Captive audience is pretty good. All right, so Demir stuff. So I like Planeswalkers against Demir stuff. Um, seems like a good reason to play Theater of Horrors as well. Big thing here is going to be that we need to keep it in removal because of Thief of Sanity. I don't want, you know, this is not like a matchup where you just cut all your removal kind of thing. Uh, this is 64. Everything we have is kind of good. So they're playing Ritual of Soot. Maybe I don't play Incubation Druid. Yeah, I saw that Marcus all go to the Raptors. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I mean, I think that's a good pickup for the R Raptors, like... Basketball wise, but his contract that's pretty scary over the next, I don't know, three, four years, however long it is. But I think that's gonna help him out this year. You think you agree on cutting Druid? Okay. Um I'm not sure if we need all three Judiths. This doesn't seem like a great Judith matchup. I think I want to cut one Judith. And three druids. So I'll have that one incubation druid. Hmm. Could play a Brontodon. No, let's just go with this. I, I still want to have a, a an oak. I mean, I, I don't want to get rid of everything on turn two. It's kind of weird to play one incubation druid. But that's the only one I want. Yeah, the East has like some real good teams. Um, between the Bucks, 76ers, and, and Raptors, it'll be interesting to see what a, which one of those goes to the finals. They've all like in, you know they've all made their team better here at the day at the deadline. Yeah, Cinder Vines could certainly be a thing. I could see them playing like Eldest Reborns for sure. And then, yeah, maybe Search Roscanta Disinformation Campaign. I think I would rather have Brontodon over Cinder Vines, though. So, like, just in case, Brontodon can still just be a, um, you know, a 3 4 creature. All 
All right, they kept their card on top. Oh, this campaign's getting us pretty good. Disinformation campaign is a card that is really brutal against Mold of Fives. Yeah, a Cindervine's deck would be a little weird. Make a dedicated Cinder Vines deck? That, that would be a little, a little weird. That'd be a little difficult. Theater Horrors is a great draw for us. Great draw here. We can start getting extra cards that they can't discard. Really good draw. Yeah, pair it with Burn Spells. So I can ping them and then I get this land drop. Or I play Branch Walker. I just play Branch Walker. Hopefully we just get to draw a land with Branch Walker and hit a land drop also. Um, I'm going to keep this on top. All right, so that card, that card on top, is going to be going under Theater of Horrors, and I think it's, I think Rass's Contempt's a good card to have under the Theater of Horrors. Hey Dagmar, good afternoon. Oh really? Okay. You haven't seen a whole lot of disinformation campaign, and so you went with some Nullhide Ferox on the board. That's that's pretty interesting. Nullhide Ferox doesn't see enough play. That card's really strong. Removal and standard is so good, though. Good. So, with Theater of Horrors, that's really what we want to do, is just hit land drops over and over and over again. Um, so we have, like, the mana to be able to pay for to activate the ability and then cast other things. And it's, it's good to keep our, our hand clear with this campaign. It's a likely counterspell target. But sitting back and keeping cards in hand against the blue-black control deck is just not, you know, it's not a, a place to be, so might as well play it. If it resolves, it is, oh man, if, if Angrath would resolve here, it would be just so great for us, how we, we would get to tick up to turn on Theater of Horrors, make a land drop. Um, you know, that would have been spectacular if it resolved, but. Oh no. Dang, I was hoping they didn't have any more of those, because they had already used uh, two of those earlier. Hey, what's up, Yud? Yeah, we're going to be playing some Bant Value later. Um... You know, trying to make Militia Bugler work. I'm not sure if Militia Bugler is good enough for the format, but, you know, we'll, we'll be trying. Uh, no, I think Bant Fog is better than Simic Fog. I think that having having Settle the Wreckage is better than not having Settle the Wreckage. I think White offers some good cards for the deck. Settle and Revitalize and 
other sideboard options, Knight of Autumn, stuff like that. What do I think of about smothering tithe in standard? Um, I don't think it's necessarily a, an amazing card or anything, but it's a fun card to play. Um, but I don't. It's not. It's not going to be uh, too good of a card, I suppose. But I like it. I like the design of the card. How this thing goes is a this is nothing. We've been drawn really well. You know, Phoenix and then Vivian. We're drawn really well. I could see our opponent not having um, another contempt, hopefully. Yeah, I feel pretty good. Uh, they had another contempt. All right, we're not gonna win this now. Now they have active Escanta now. We can't win anymore, but I feel pretty good for a for a third game here you know we we're on a mulligan to five oh water down the wrong the wrong pipe there uh. did did you ever did you even play modern yeah I I was uh, uh, I dealt the damage to me whoops um, yeah I've been known as I was known as a really big innovator in modern over the last couple of years but just play standard now Okay, they don't seem to have as many creatures. Let's get the Cindervine in there. Let's get the Duresses. And Rhythm. Trophy out. Ravager Worm out. This is 63. Drew it out. And Judith. Yeah, still keeping the Lava Coils in, though, because of Thief of Sanity. I think you just kind of have to. And actually, actually, I do want Cinder Vines over Thrashing Brontodon. I think Cinder Vines can kind of sit back and do some chip, chip damage and everything. No, I like I like Vraska Golgari Queen. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a, a good amount of minus three targets for Vraska between um, between Thief of Sanity, Search for Escanta, and Disinformation Campaign. I don't love this hand uh, with having a Contempt and a Coil immediately. So I'm duressing before their turn two, before they could um, 
play Sir Triscanta. Oh, thanks for the kind words, Penumbra. Yeah, un unfortunately didn't get to see say hi to you then in Milwaukee. Sorry about that. Oh, that's... Yeah, I... I for... Honestly... Honestly, I kind of forgot that... Ravager Worm destroys... The... As Kanta, the Sunken Ruin, there for a minute. But the thing about... Uh, we only have one black. The thing about uh, Ravager Worm, though, is it's really easy to counter. Uh, the six mana creature, you know, they can use, like, Cast Down to kill it. Um, I think mean, it's kind of easy to easy for our opponent to deal with, uh, being six mana. You know, six just is a ton of mana. Black Geppetto with the third month. Keep up the good work, Todd. Always enjoy your stream. Thank you so much, Black Geppetto. Thank you kindly. <laughs> oh, I love seeing all those hype boats in the channel. Thanks, everybody. All right, Midnight Reaper and Rekindling Phoenix. Get some work done. Phoenix time. Thanks, Flips. I hope our, I hope our opponent just plays two Thief of Sanities here. And no Vrasis Contempts. Hostage Taker. Alright, well that's fine. I'll take it. Honestly, I wonder if I should have just led with the coil, let them negate the coil, and then coil again plus duress. Just had the most satisfying win against Nexus deck while playing Esper Control. I exiled all of their Nexus Nexus cards and Wilderness Reclamations with Unmoored Ego. Nice. Hey, what's up, Crazy Pyro? <laughs> have a good day, Rod, but not you, Todd. Um, do I want to contempt this before blockers? Or do I want to just let them block? Hmm. They bounce one Phoenix, block another. I think I just let them block so I can just replay this other Phoenix. Again, because I want to spend the four mana on this. If Lava Coil was instant, I would Lava Coil, because, you know, I can do that and Phoenix. <laughs> nice. It's a good reason to have the stream on, just for the DJing. Okay. One and O. Oh. Outlasted. 
Outlasted the uh, Demir deck. No, I won't be grinding to the top eight mythic. I'm not going to play that much. Uh, you just have to play so, so many hours and everything. Yeah, Rekindling Phoenix did so much work there. That's the thing. Rekindling Phoenix is just such a good card. You know, that's why I wanted another one of those in the deck last time we played uh, with only two Phoenix and we had Vampire Sovereigns, but Rekindling Phoenix is just, just such a good card. All right, we need our Incubation Druid to not die. I'm kind of all in on this Incubation Druid. Don't die, Druid. Don't die. Don't die. Basic forest doesn't kill things. Oh no. No! Opponent, why are you so rude? Man, the phoenixes were gonna just wreck our opponent. Um, I would play Bant Flash. Deck I streamed a few days ago. So the downside of Assassin's Trophy is you just can't play it early ever. Like I just can't you just can't kill things with Assassin's Trophy. You just can't ramp your opponent. Just it's just a card you can't cast. Uh if it So that's that's the problem with it is early on, you know, late game destroying anything is, you know, you have it's okay and like destroying like a flip desk canta is, is awesome. But you just can't You just can't play it early. Um, I don't think it's worth it just to play find to get back Druid, because uh, doing that just kind of really tells the opponent that, hey, kill kill this Druid. You know, play your Chupacabra, because like this Druid is very important for me because I'm spending an, a find on it. So it, it's a pretty big tell. We, we, if our opponent does have Vivian, I, I am going to be trophying that because just got to get rid of Vivian. But I'd, I'd rather this be Bedevil, where they wouldn't get a land for free. Every fight makes me stronger. Balance comes. But against, you know, we could be playing against like Bant Nexus though that just has enchantments, where Bedevil wouldn't. Kill the enchantments with trophy wood. Not dead yet. Oh no, I haven't put on Deckmaster. Good call. Let me get that up and running. Alright, one more mana we can finality. Alright, Deckmaster should be up now. Uh, is it worth uh, crafting Sarkin for a Grixis Dragons deck? Um, honestly, maybe not. I don't. I don't think you necessarily need Sarkin in Grixis Dragons. I think if you're if you're like worried about your your Mythic Wild Card slot, I don't think you need it. Um. A friend of mine plays a whole lot of Grixis Dragons, and I know that he said that he's been disappointed in in Sarkin for the most part. Like, he still has him in, but, you know, thinks that there's a lot of times where it's kind of weak. I don't think we have much of a chance to win this game. 
opponent has a huge mana advantage. They have Vivian. That trophy, you know, really hurt us here, how they got to cast Find and then double Jade Light Ranger last turn. You know, if they have one less land, not not being able to cast both Jade Light Rangers, that would have been really, really important for us. Tro that's, that's why I just don't like trophy as a card. It, like, when you're playing these mid-range mirrors, the, having the extra mana and using an extra mana every single turn is so incredibly vital. It's just it's so powerful having more mana. So it's how you win, is spending more mana than your opponent. Let's but, tear this place uh, apart. Most everybody that plays these black green decks <laughs> do play as Athens Trophy. A lot of people play it, the card. I don't like it myself. Hey, what's up, Sculpted, Ma Sculpted Mind? All right, we need to draw another finality. I think that that's about the only thing that can save us right now. So I can play, play this to chump and contempt. Galen. Yeah, the yeah. Oh yeah, the the color problem definitely did us in for sure. Um, but I was just saying, pointing out how the extra mana, you know, even that turn, our opponent got to have nine mana then, and so they got to Vivian plus Chupacabra. That extra mana is just so important. So yeah, trophies out in this matchup. So there's not, like, enchantments that you need to kill, um, or difficult permanents. We have, we'll just have our other removal. I just, I just don't ever want to play that card in this, in this matchup. So I'm taking it out. Uh, let's get another Vivian and another Angrath. Uh, for some more Planeswalkers. Um, this is 61. Hey, what's up, Weedoc? Yeah, the, the Druid helps, the Druid helps with, like, the, the Red Source thing, you know, um, our opponent cast outing our druid just killed us. If if that didn't happen, we would have been fine. But that kind of helps with our red, our red source a little bit, and these things kind of explore to help you find more red sources. But you know we didn't have those things last game. All right, we'll make it two Judiths. All right, let's try again. Yeah, it's not a total answer. Yeah. I can certainly understand being sick of Golgari decks and, you know, Sultai now. I, I can certainly understand that. Um, it's kind of how... It's kind of how standard is um, when you get to, like, the spring. Basically, people kind of always... Basically, every year around springtime, people are, like, really looking forward to cards rotating. You know, like, right now, it's probably the Explore package. Um, and, of course, uh, like, Teferi, Nexus. Um, but, you know, it's been like that before. Like, people were, like, like couldn't wait till like, getting out of Zendikar rotated or, like, Collect a Company before that. And... Um, all sorts of stuff. That's kind of just how how it is. With standard, you play against. There's some things you play against too much. I do feel that the. Uh, I do feel though that um, guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance were have been really well designed. I think they've been really, um, kind of really even across the board. Like like there's good cards in like all of, like the guilds, and there's doesn't seem like there's anything in those sets that are like really overpowered and that you know come next year that that we're saying a lot things like ah, i can't wait for you know that to rotate kind of thing um it's yeah um you know niv mizzet has the potential to be that but i kind of doubt it 
Krasis? Krasis has that potential. Yeah, that's that's a good one, actually. I, I wasn't thinking about Krasis. I forgot about that card. Krasis absolutely has the potential to be... We're tired of Krasis. Yeah, absolutely. That's... That's a good one there. I feel like... I feel like after, um, should I coil this? I feel like after, uh, Teferi and Nexus of Fate rotate out like this fall, that Wilderness Reclamation won't be the same kind of feeling for like next year. So I, I don't think that Wilderness Reclamation, you know, obviously other cards are going to be printed. We have like a bunch of sets in, until then. So, you know, I could certainly be wrong. Um, but just kind of gut feeling is that I, I don't I don't feel like Wilderness Reclamation is going to be uh, the same kind of um, card that people are annoyed at at this time next year. Oh well, yeah, I, I don't. I don't really mind the design of Crisis at all. Honestly, I I think it's a, a a fine design card. It's it's really powerful. You know, it's the same kind of thing with like uh, Wow Growth Walker, Jade Light Ranger, or Merfolk Branch Walker. I don't think that those cards are poor designed cards. I think those you know like they're good, but I think that they're uh, you know fairly well designed cards. Um, but we've just played against them so much that people are tired of them kind of thing. How we were talking about a little bit ago. And Beasts I could see that with Krasis of just Krasis seeing so much play that people get tired of it kind of thing. I've seen things that would break someone like you. Squirrels hit harder. <laughs> Got 30 plus packs and didn't open shield. a single Shockland on Arena. Dang, Grayson, that is sad. Hey, King Vegas. Where's fighting in the dance song? So I'm basically playing Ravager Worm to kind of use the, my mana the best, get a hit on there, Vivian. Um, you know, it costs six mana here. Next turn we get to Midnight Reaper plus where you can Link Phoenix, so I like how we get to use the mana there. You don't want Midnight Reaper? Well, how about Midnight Reaper? Finality isn't going to do very much with the Wild Growth Walker being a 3-5 here. We may find some other cards to kind of play besides you just these two, but it's likely nature. those two. All right, hope they haven't had an answer for Vivian yet, so hopefully they don't draw Contempt here. Um, they don't draw Contempt, we ultimate Vivian, we win, so they have to have Contempt this turn, otherwise they lose. And we feel like they would have just played Contempt a previous turn if they had it. Pork says, hey, I've been playing a bunch, a lots of best of one, but I want to jump no into best of three, but can't like seem to build a, side, a sideboard. Any tips? Um, kind of focus on a, a couple of decks with your sideboard to start with. Kind of just have, have like, like honestly, just kind of start start small with your sideboard and kind of expand from there. Just start with like a sideboard that's has a lot of cards that are good against mono red and good against control. Just kind of focus on that. Focus on the two ends of the spectrum, especially if you're like a more mid range type deck. Um, so kind of focus on those with your sideboard, and. Uh, 
because those are those are those are decks Not that it's easier to um, easier to know what cards are bad against those decks, and so it's easier to take cards out, bring better cards in, um, and then kind of kind of go from there. Of uh, you know, then you'll have too much for those matchups probably, but then you can kind of see, okay, maybe I don't need you know this card against control. Maybe I have enough, and I don't necessarily need this card, so maybe I can take this out and have something that's better against Sultai. Kind of thing like that. Panavia. Thanks for re in there. Second month. And, you know, so you won't have the best sideboard against, like, the other decks in the format right away. But, you know, it's a learning process. So that's fourth sub of the day. And it uh, looks like we're actually back to 90 here. Um, all right. So Phoenix is attacking this Vivian. So they had a trophy, so no automatic win for us. Dang, 60 packs and still no Shockland? That's crazy. Well, at least you know that you know you can't open up more than more than four of any card. Right? So you know that the more packs you open, the closer you get to Shocklands because you you can't you can't keep on opening up, you know, a bunch of uh I don't know, whatever crappy rare. You can't just only get Growth Chamber Guardians all day. All right, so it looks like a finality here. Uh, so we'll get to draw two, four, six. We'll get to draw six cards. Because we don't draw a card for the token dying. Ravager Worm won't die. But we'll have a, a brand new hand. We'll go to 13, draw six. <laughs> so you're disappointed, but not shocked. Uh, you open a hundred dollars of the packs and only got three shocks. It seems like their algorithm makes it more difficult to get shock lands. You know, I don't think that's anything we can prove, but it certainly kind of seems like it. I know shock lands were some of the the last rares that I had, also, and I've had I actually used wild cards on. On some of them too, there. Except for hollowed fountains, for some reason, I got I had like four hollowed fountains right away. I was drawing tons of hollowed fountains, but other shock lands couldn't couldn't open. And of course, we have one Phoenix that's dead now, but we have we have the fi the find that can get it back. I don't necessarily need to get back another Midnight Reaper. We already got lots of Midnight Reapers. Oh, pack seventy got you a Godless Shrine. Oh, that's crazy. Chance of opening no shocks in sixty packs is eight percent. Does now Dorvin does that count with um, whenever you have four of a rare? You can't open that rare anymore. Does that does that take into account that? Because it's it would probably raise that percentage up slightly, not very much, but <laughs> I just now started getting Hollow Fountains, and I'm like 160 packs in. That's weird. But then Mug and Soul says it was the same with them for Hollowed Fountains. Four, 
All right, so we're gonna draw eight, lose eight. I'm glad our opponent used that finality now before I got too many more creatures on the battlefield, honestly. And the good thing about the Incubation Druid also surviving here is now we just have a whole lot more mana, so we can we can spend all this mana we have uh, with all these things we have to do. Cards. The wilds are my shield. Is that seven mana right now. They just, they just concede. Yeah, sure. Rekindling Phoenix, you know, dies to removal. It can get exiled. Um, but when your opponent can exile it, like against Golgari here, it is awesome. Sure, they have Rastus Contempt, so they can exile it. But we also have all these Planeswalkers they need to have Rastus Contempt for also. Um, Phoenix was really strong for us that last game. That was going to be what I was going to do. I was going to play the Jade Light, hold up Contempt. The The problem, honestly, actually, I think I was probably just going to play the Incubation Druid. The problem with playing the Jade Light there is the Jade Light just turns into a 4-3. It doesn't, um, it, it's not going to explore us into to more lands or anything like that at, at that point. Because we already knew our top card was the, the Vraska that I was keeping on top. So I think I was actually just going to play the, the O2. Uh, to be able to have more mana for a previous for a next turn and hold up contempt. This is a this is a sweet curve. Let's see if we get a couple land drops and are able to do this. That's why I only play Zatalpa, because I don't want my creature dying to removal. Well, Zatalpa also can get exiled, so... Maybe you just play only Carnage Tyrants. Alright, Branchwalker draws a land. I want this Branchwalker to be a 2-1 that draws a land. That's what I want. 2-1 draw a land. Down, down. Hmm... Ooh. Right now, I only have one black mana right now. For contempt. I'm going to keep the, the Midnight Reaper. I think it's... I think it will kind of fit my curve a little better than the Judith here. Yeah, Carter's Tyrant can die to Cleansing Nova or Eldest Reborn. Carter's Tyrant is pretty bad value against an Eldest Reborn. All right, so this Angrath is going to be, um, Angrath's going to be blocking, or Angrath's going to be stealing. Sorry, not blocking. Angrath's going to be stealing the Wild Growth Walker to kill it later. I only play Squee. There you go, Mono Squee. <laughs> Mono Squee control. That's a good card. 
That turns their Jade Lion to a 4-3 also. Wow. Wow. Cards are good. Oh, it says nah. No, thank you. Friends. This is tough. I don't really want to block this. Hey, what's up, Gambosa? Thanks for resubbing there. That's sub number five. All right, so if I if I take this, I go to twelve. Uh, not a good life total to have with a Midnight Reaper in hand, especially if I'm going to shock next turn to play Rekindling Phoenix. Could just not shock and play Judith. Hmm, Lava Coil's a little late. A little late. Just go not shock Judith. Uh, no attacks. All right, so that's sub number five on the day. The only thing I have to say about that burn player is what I put on my Twitter announcement that I... Um, had there back in like October. So that's why they put the creatures in their graveyard. It was fine finality. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, no land for us. Let's just go with the Phoenix. Land would have been really nice to get this Wild Growth Walker. The cool part about stealing the Wild Growth Walker also, like even if they have like the Midnight Reaper in play, is that it'll trigger our Midnight Reaper because we'll sacrifice it when it's on under control for us. So we'll get like the Wild the Midnight Reaper and the uh, Judith trigger from the Wild Growth Walker. So that's that's pretty cool. Um yeah, the just subscribers uh subs wearing off. Like Twitch Prime subs wearing off from like last month, the number fluctuates, and so we're ninety one away from the next emote goal and stuff now. So you know, I just kind of look at it and and everything, and update it. So that's why the stream counter went up. I've lost so much already. Balance comes. All right, so unfortunately, we don't have double black right now for contempt. But if we just hit a land, oh yeah, there we go. We hit a land. All right, so we get to Angrath. Let's steal Wild Growth. <laughs> With your crew for my freedom? <laughs> a fair price. So I could certainly see my opponent chump blocking this Wild Growth Walker to keep their Vivian alive. Uh, they didn't do it. I was hoping they would. Um, but we were going to be able to kill Vivian either way because of the Judith trigger. We were going to be able to kill Vivian. But I, I wasn't sure if my opponent would realize that. So I was hoping that they were going to um, chump to keep it alive. All right, with me being at nine, kind of need a block with this Midnight Reaper. Need it to die. So I am worried about losing too much life from it. Etres with the... Um, With the sub. Thank you, Etras. So, yeah, so attacking them would have been a better play as far as damage goes. 
because we were going to be able to kill Vivian either way. So we could have got six points of damage on them. I was kind of testing my opponent a little bit there. I, I don't know if that... I'm honestly not sure if that six points really matters too much. Um, is that important to winning for us? Um, all right, it has an update. It still says 91 right now. Um, and so I was seeing, I was giving them the opportunity to make a bad play, basically. I was giving them the opportunity to, to chump block, which would have been really good for us. Finality doesn't kill us. Finality doesn't kill us at all. It would be it would be bad for us, but it doesn't it doesn't kill us. Remember, when you, the opponent no finalities, fire. all their creatures get minus no four, minus steel. four. So they won't they won't have anything to, to deal damage. I guess like the Jade Light could deal like two damage. And remember we we'd have a chump blocker with a, a token also if we need to. We could even chump chump block with that. Alright, let's get rid of this thing. They discarded another Vivian. Interesting. Yeah, zero born. I was just just talking about that. But yeah, it's still it's still saying ninety one right now. The sub counter number fluctuates like from a you know last month whenever subs wear off, you know it it uh, goes up and down. But we are opening a pack after this. I am glad the Midnight Reaper is dead. I am glad that's dead. Yeah, sure. Rules question. If I steal a creature with Curious Obsession on it and attack with it, who gets to draw the card? Ooh, that's a good question. You know, right away I would say that you do, but Curious Obsession is still owned by the opponent. No fire. I kind of feel like the opponent no would. Alright, people in chat are saying that you draw the card, but you control the creature, not the Curious Obsession. I would have to read the Curious Obsession. Okay, so, okay, Curious Obsession says an enchanted creature gains that ability. So you control the the creature, so the the creature gains the ability and you control the creature so that means you get the ability so yeah you'll draw the card um i i could just play another judith here Nah, i'm just gonna hold up contempt i could play another judith and get like two triggers i don't think that's worth it and i don't think it's you know, I'm a little worried about playing another midnight, playing a midnight reaper. So I'm just gonna hold up contempt. Yes, yeah, so you can also do that. You can steal the creature, not attack, and then the obsession would get sacrificed. Yep, because that's again something that the creature gains. Back to the devil's chains in the stormwreck sea I go. They had to discard something, and so I guess Elder Reborn was the card they wanted to discard in hand. Um, yeah, we got them to discard two really good cards with Vivian and Elder Reborn in the tick up, so can't complain about that. Alright, now I don't need to worry about finality nearly as much, or at all now. Yeah, so our, our opponent could be at 15 now if I would have attacked them. Our opponent could be at 15.
Oh, Curious Obsession's part of the effect is from the Enchantment Aura? Okay. But I didn't read the card too much. Yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. That part's part of the Obsession, so it does not get sacrificed. Okay. I can see that. Oh, I maybe should have contempted one of these Wild Growth Walkers before they gain six life. Sorry, I was looking at chat there for a second. Guess I could have used a contempt there. I don't know. I don't know. If, I kind of like saving the contempt, honestly. So I'm I'm fine with saving it. They don't have a good attack anyway, as you can tell them with them not attacking there. I get carried away. Hmm. So I could finality and wrath their board. Could wrath their board. Wrath and the board sounds kind of cool. Okay, so right now we get, if I fi finality, I probably put counters on one of these phoenixes. And then I have one, two, three creatures, so I only get three triggers. So I can I can kill like one Wild Growth Walker and deal one to another. Um, if I play Midnight Reaper, it's probably kind of too close to us dying. So I could just play another Judith, and then I get... I mean, I could just let both Phoenixes die. That's probably the easiest thing, is just let both Phoenixes die and put the counters on Incubation Druid. We got these 1-1 one, 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 one tokens now. Get some chip shots in. Man, finality is sweet with Judith. <laughs> They're microwave daves. They're, sorry, they're microwaved eggs. That's why they have the one power. Nice. Oh, Wrath their board? That's pretty good. All right, 2-0 with Jund. All right, let's get a pack. I have one pack left from uh, some packs I had before from a draft. So I looked at it and there are only four mythics. I already have all the rares and there's only four mythics. I don't have all of them. So Kaya, Captive Audience, um, Rakdos the Showstopper, and Emergency Powers. Those are the only cards we can open up. So let's hopefully open up one of those and not a rare. So come on, mythic. Ah, it was a rare. Dang. Oh well, yep. Just get some get some more gems. Uh no, it's feeling good so far. J Jack, feeling good. Um I don't love the Assassin's Trophy still like I talked about before. Um that card certainly hurt us the game one in that matchup. It's just not good in that matchup, but we sideboarded it out and then and we were good. Um, I don't think there's a good emergency powers deck yet. Yeah, I've played a little bit of ranked best of three. I've done played it like twice so far. Um, and so I'm kind of planning on doing 
a little bit of ranked best of three every once in a while. So I know that's that's something that a lot of people want me to do, so. Hmm. I think the plan is... Yeah, the plan is just to kind of work up towards this finality. Uh, next turn, uh, you know, in this matchup. Next turn, we can just activate Incubation Druid and uh, get it to be above finality, and then we can put the counters on it. Yeah, finality does kill a Danto. Yes. Oh, I can't adapt this now, can I? Crap, I forgot about Type Taker making it cost a lot of mana to adapt things. I forgot about that. Hmm. That's annoying. Well, still casting finality. No, I just don't get to keep my incubation druid anymore. That's annoying. I could have a 4 6 incubation druid that adds a lot of mana. Yep. That's my bad. I'm playing my first paper draft tomorrow for the first time in years. Any advice? Um, biggest advice is just have fun. You know, it, it'll be... It should be a good time, you know, playing playing paper and, you know, just enjoy it. You know, don't, you know, you don't really need to put expectations on yourself. I being a former assassin is useful sometimes. Um... But yeah, just just learn from it and everything. <laughs> yeah, rare draft, build that collection. Rakdos, I've I've certainly yeah, Rakdos doesn't seem to be too good. Seems to be the worst of the guilds, uh, for limited purposes. Oh, really? FNL? Okay. So you've been having a lot of success with Rakdos. Cool, that's good to hear. They can't flip Legion's Landing yet. Alright, now they can. Yeah, the guild gates are all really good. And like the, the build around gate cards, I like quite a bit. Um, my last draft that I did, I got, you know, I did like one a draft... That's how we just had those packs. I did a draft like last week with um, with like a pre-release code, and I did. I had a Simic deck that was just bonkers. It was so good. I had a lot of Guild Gates, and um, you know, I like a lot of like blue, white, red, green, and then also blue, green uh, Guild Gates. I wasn't splashing any colors, but I was just playing the off off color Guild Gates because I had three Gatebreaker Rams. And that card is just super good. All right, so we got these moments. Another contempt. Old Brontes. Um, yeah, three Rams. I also had a Frilled Mystic. I had a, a Zagana for, like, my rare. 
Um, I had like two applied biomancies in incubation, incongruity. My deck was nice. Decent amount of two drops. Um, I had a biogenic upgrade uh, in the six mana slot. And and then my five mana slot, I just had one of the one of the cards that regrowth two permanents. I didn't I didn't do the draft on I didn't do it on stream. Windstorm Drake, Trollbred Guardian, or Sunder Shaman. I would probably just take the Trollbred Guardian. It kind of keeps you open and it's really good. I like that card a lot. Alright, anyway, we gotta gotta do some sideboarding here. Um, trophy's coming out with us having like the better removal in. Uh, I don't know. We could have trophy in actually. All right, we'll keep trophy in. Uh, what am I cutting? Midnight Reaper. And a Vivian. Hey, what's up, Celtics Banner? Happy Thursday. So, do the Mavs make any more trades today? Uh, I mean, I like our hand. Our hand can get run over, but our opponent's at six cards. I think the trade deadline's come and gone. Not sure if they used all their cap space they had for anything else today. Doesn't look like it. Nope, doesn't look like it. Old snubbies. We added one one land. One extra land. We had 25 last time. We got 26 now. Um, added another Phoenix. Uh, that's two of the Vampire Sovereign slots. I don't remember. I, I'm not sure exactly what was the other slot. Oh, I think a second Vivian. Yeah, I think a second Vivian. Eisenbuck, welcome back to the stream. Thanks for continuing that Twitch Prime sub here. For five months. Oh, we had 24 before? Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad we had two more lands. I like these lands. Cool. Yeah, lands are good, so I like it. Unfortunately, Branch Walker is not a 3-2 where I'd be able to block that Snubhorn and do anything for it. Problem is those Snubhorns are going to be a lot bigger next turn. But Rekindling Phoenix is going to be a good card for us. You know, hope they don't have Conclave Tribunal for a last card. But Snubbies should be 3 threes now. Hmm. Yeah, you have, to be, you have to be careful with the Incubation Druid and the Auto Tapper for sure. That's that's one you gotta be careful of. Ugh. Well, deputy, that's a little better for us than conclave tribunal because we can contempt the deputy. 
Oh, that's a that's a great turn for the opponent, though. That's a pretty big turn. Um, maybe I just play Shock Ravager Worm Fight. One one counter. Fight here. Get my Phoenix back. Help. Yeah, this is this is Azorius aggro, is what's called. Um, this is like the the most popular form of mono white right now. It's just mono white with deputy of detention um, as like the only blue card in the main deck. Uh, they may have like some blue counter spells or something in the sideboard also. Probably have like a little bit of counter magic. Like, yeah, Ravager Worm, real good. Okay, so let's eat this, eat this. That's 12 coming in. Now, let's do a little chumping. Take 8, go to 9. Another deputy attention would be Really brutal. Okay, good. Yeah, Ravage Worm animation is so good. It's certainly worth playing more of the card, almost, just to see that animation some more. Um, Just go Vivian, kill the Banalia. I could uh, play Bronte and hold up Contempt. I guess that's what I'm going to do. If our opponent does have, um, does draw a deputy at detention, I certainly want to be able to contempt it. It's a good card. That does not give him trample, right? No. One one counter, they gain vigilance. So we're going to go to 11, then down, down to 6. Draw something good. Not quite, not quite. The wild wasn't meant to be contained. So look for a two I've drop to play. Would break someone like you. All right, not a two drop, but we're good in Phoenix. Yeah, our creatures were indestructible, so it didn't matter what I blocked. Please don't draw anything good again. They're reading all the cards. Mousing over everything at least. 
which doesn't make me feel good. Maybe they're just lining up the attacking blocks. All right. That makes me feel better. All right, I need something that costs three or less. You can't stop nature. Branch walker will do. Cost three or less. I think they were kind of lining up like the attackers and blockers and seeing if it was, you know, if they were supposed to, wanting to attack there. I think I guess that's what they were probably doing. Oh yeah, certainly dead to a deputy. Not much to do about that, though. Relic Seeker will be good. Yeah, if they had Tribunal, they would have cast it because it was lethal. Yeah, so, like, I was just dead to any removal spell last time. Now I'm still dead to Deputy, but I'm not dead to Tribunal anymore. Okay, just went ahead and picked it up. Whew. Three and O. Oh. Jundy midrange. Yeah, actually won that. It didn't look good for us, but we still got there. All right, play first. Okay. Slow hand. Um, hope our opponent's playing a slower deck. <laughs> Which best of one deck I should craft? Probably, I mean, Okay, to, pre to prefix this, I don't play best of one very much. So I just kind of see like what other people do and stuff. So I don't have like the best opinion, but other people in chat may be able to help out a little more. But I would say probably mono red. It seems like mono red is, is just really good in best of one with, um, it's the most popular deck. And I think it's it's a good one. Like with the, um, with the way you can kind of fix your hands and everything. Playing against Drakes here, a good chance that if we just play Midnight Reaper, they coil it. They could, of course, shock a Midnight Reaper. I would, I would prefer them to shock a Midnight Reaper, but I feel like if I just play the Midnight there, they coil it. Nice. All right, we got the land. We get to Phoenix next turn. That's the big thing. I guess I don't want Phoenix getting coiled, though. Hmm. Phoenix getting coiled is bad for me. The song's about Aquaman going deep into Africa. I think I think you're onto something there. You're not the only person there, Zero Born, that does not like playing against Nexus at all. Certainly something I've heard from a lot of people. No coil, please. No coil. No steel. Don't do it. So we need to draw a green source here for the to go Vivian next turn. The opponent didn't do it, and we drew a green source. We gotta have spell pierce though, right? All right, I'm gonna try to play around spell pierce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, the, the blue red Drake stacks play um, a Dragon Skull Summit for Discovery. Well, I messed up. Should have played Reaper first. That was me messing up right there. I was just uh, not the best sequencing on my part. All right, so we get to draw a card. They could they could certainly have shock and kill the other the egg here. Oh, they didn't even have shock. They're just letting me draw a card. That's kind of cool. I still don't want to play into spell pierce. Cause, so what I was saying is, like, even if they would have killed the, the phoenix, and the phoenix was, like, dead, we would just find, cast find and get it back. I guess we are kind of killing our opponent faster than them killing us, so might as well attack. They haven't had Lava Coil this whole time. Which I've been very happy about. I like how they played their 1-1 first. Alright, so we both made a little bit little sequencing mistakes. Don't think they should have played their 1-1 first. Yeah, so no no spell pierce we have to worry about now. Or dive down. Hey, what's up, Dirk? I mean, I guess now they could suddenly have Spell Pierce. Because I gave him an island. No! I still played into Spell Pierce. They had it the whole time. That's alright. <laughs> Why is Judith so sweet? That's a good rhetorical question, though. I like it. I don't think there's anything they can do. Yeah, we could have attacked with both creatures and dealt three damage to them, put them down to one, because um, they have to block Rekindling Phoenix. Uh, otherwise, they're dead, right? So then Judith deals two to them, and then like the trigger deals an extra one. Um, so yeah, certainly could have could have attacked with both and just had it, had a Phoenix egg. And play, and then Let's be at one. Tear this place apart. The thing is, I I don't think that that really keeps us from winning here. Or I don't I don't think it. Yeah, I don't think it matters either way. So I just kind of sat back. Um. Okay, so we want extra Vivian. Angrath. Steal some. Steal some Enigma Drakes. Or Terramanders. Um, 
What don't I want? Probably Judith. Judith probably doesn't matter as much this match. Certainly want Contempt. I, I don't think I want Cindervine. There's no artifacts or enchantments I really care to destroy, and the, the one damage, they'll kill us a lot faster. We're not, like, winning any race because of the Cindervine. I think it's just a, a card that I'll never want to draw later on in the game. Yeah, I don't think two mana deals seven damage to them if you have this in your op if you play it on turn two is a card that I want in my deck. Nah, rhythm's not gonna matter. The they don't really counter creatures and the haste doesn't matter. Haste I guess matters a, a tiny bit, but not too much. I've seen some Drake's people play spyglass it's not very common but i have i have seen that before i could see them playing like niv mizzet but i don't really expect that hey matthew yeah 30 already on the day and we're up a game in match number 4 Okay, you play two Spyglass in your board for Drake decks. I do like Spyglass naming Vivian. I think that's that's pretty nice. It's soon to be 4-0, but I'm not jinxing it. Cool. Yeah, I could see them having a couple disdainful strokes. Absolutely. Could see that. I'm going to want to play Rekindling Phoenix next turn, so let's cast this Duress here. I don't like our opponent opting in response, and which is, this is something I've seen a lot of people like opt in response to discard spells. The only way I think that opt is good is if they don't have any, like, spells. Because, um, like, I'm just taking a Lava Coil there over the opt anyway. Like, I'm not taking that opt. But it's unfortunate they have another Lava Coil for this Phoenix. That's really not good for me. They, discard, they discarded a Crackling Drake. Interesting. Certainly like seeing that, my opponent discarding a crackling drake. If they're if they're looking for a counter for duress, I still don't like that either because that's that's what I want the duress to take, usually is a counter spell. So I don't think that's I think it'd be better for them to keep the opt and look for a counter for something else. in that scenario. Alright, trying to draw any of our Planeswalkers. That'll do. This could get Disdainful Stroked, but this is a good card for me to get Disdainful Stroked, because then I can cast Find and get both it and the Branch Walker back. If they counter it. S 
so yeah, you're saying playing the Phoenix into the lava coil seems weird. It, I mean, the the Phoenix is never not getting lava. Like it's it's certainly going to get lava coiled. Um, that did take that that turn up where they didn't get to just like play the crackling Drake immediately. Um, and it could have maybe potentially allowed us to resolve another spell after the Phoenix, like a Vivian, if we drew into it. Um, it was that's why I was thinking. I wanted to take their turn up with the lava coil there. Johnny Stefani. Getting that tier one stuff for nine months. Thanks, Johnny Stefani. You are a rock star. That is sub number eight on the day. And two more. We're cracking open another pack. Yeah, they'd have to have a third lava coil. We made that. We duressed one. But yeah, I don't. Like, do they disconnect? I guess. Looks like a disconnection. It doesn't make any sense for our opponent to rage quit after a, a rekindling phoenix. It just doesn't make sense. So I, I don't think it's a rage quit. It's just it's just a rekindling phoenix. Yeah, it's it's certainly possible that something came up that they had to deal with. You know, you just never know. Maybe the pizza delivery person showed up at the door. Yeah, or maybe they had to go to the restroom or something. You just never know. Could also just be somewhere where they did just disconnect. Wakugate says their cat got stuck in a toaster. Aw. Poor cat. Alright, final boss time already at 4-0. I think we were going to win that, that game, but, you know, we certainly made that easier. So we could 5-0. We have an extra life still available for our final boss. Final boss with extra life. Alright, let's get our final boss music. Earlier today, the food I ordered arrived while I was in the middle of a match. I got back just in time. Yeah, see, that's see, I could see something like that happening. Maybe our opponent didn't quite get back in time. Hey, what's up, Boot? Made it just in time for final boss time. Oh. Really got got to get these emotes. Got to get a final boss emote. That was a really quick mulligan for the opponent. They mulliganed in like a quarter of a second. Sultai final boss. Called it. All right, Phoenix and Vivian. It's our plan. Coil. We had a good, yeah, it could be a 40 minute game. You never know. We had a real good match against Sultai earlier. 
We lost game one and then won games two and three. We gotta draw this fifth land though. Yeah, how can you tell what they are running from just seeing two mana? Um, just playing the game a lot, basically. Just just played enough that our opponent has forest, drowned catacomb. It's like the the one deck that, that plays it as this explore version of Sultai here. There are, you know, it could certainly be wrong um, at times, but just the percentages. All right, so they're missing land drops, which is awesome for us. Huh. Uh, we'll, we'll just play this. If they if they play land contempt, I meet my newest. Then friend. they can kill. Then they can kill Vivian. Taking the land to make sure we have Vraska ready to go next turn. Ooh, should be Bowser? Yeah. I'm not losing everything again. I could just finality here though too. No. I think it's Vraska tick up. With with that attack of making it making them only have no one knows uh, the two creatures. Like I do. Here's a Frasco tick up. I will be the one to guide my people. I don't see our opponent winning this one. You'll pay for that. Hey, guests with a big donation. Come. To all right, me. let's see what we got here. Um, man, these are all like good cards. It's just such a such a bad problem. All right, get that thing out of here so they don't get to draw more cards. Show no mercy. Okay, let's see. Don't know exactly how this works out, but if you could make a red-green, possibly white as well, deck that works around either dinosaurs or Domri Chaos Bringer, that would be awesome. I'm partial to Domri. Okay, I can certainly make a, a red-green Domri deck. Uh, I can do I can do both a dinosaur Domri deck. I can certainly make a red-green. Domri deck. Um, all right, so guest, when would you want me to play that deck? Uh, like what deck? Sorry, what day and what like time of day? So I, I stream from 3 to 10 Eastern. Um, I play the four decks a day. So I can play it first, second, third, or fourth, and I can make it for tomorrow, uh, the ne you know, the next day after that, or so on, you know. So whatever day and whatever time. And... Make your captain proud. And yeah, I'm I'm flexible. You can't so stop nature. I can certainly do just red green or Naya. Um, or if you want me to make the the best out of the best you think I can out of those two, certainly can do that as well. All right, we got game one. Water time. Uh, so yeah, guess if you give me a little bit more there. Especially, mostly like when you want me to play it. What's best for your schedule. 
Um, okay, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday, more towards the end of the day. Okay. As long as it's got Domri in it. Okay. So Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday. Today's today's Thursday, so I'll just do it tomorrow. So tomorrow's Friday. That sounds good. So tomorrow, third or fourth. Perfect. All right, what did I sideboard last time? I remember I brought in Vivian and Angrath um, and Contempt and cut Trophy, Trophy, one Judith. I think that's, that's what we did. Yep, and it worked out well last time. So let's... Let's try this again. Perfect. All right, I'll have that for tomorrow night. Do you think this Jun deck you are playing has a place in the current metagame? Um, I'd have to, I'd have to, you know, like play it some more and everything. We've we've been doing really good today uh, with it, but you know, just going from you know winning four matches to saying it has a, a place in the metagame is you know a little bit of a jump. Um, so I don't want to be that, uh, brazen ab about it. Um, but it's, it has worked out well and it's, it's felt good. Um, and yeah, I've been, been impressed with the deck. They're keeping Llanowar Elf on top. All right, so I coil this. They untap, play Llanowar Elf. I play Midnight Reaper. They play something else. I play Vraska, kill Llanowar Elf. Yeah. The Greg Curry Worst. Getting that Twitch Prime sub up in here. Huh. Them having Midnight Reaper was really bad for me. I used my coil too early. I was expecting them to play the Llanowar off this next turn, you know, because they kept Llanowar off on top. But then they didn't play Llanowar off. So, what am I going to do with this? Vraska kill Midnight Reaper. Huh. I only pick targets that interest me. Lucky you, people, creatures. They banish all. Alright, where are we at? We're still at 91 there. Just had some resubs. We're at 9 out of 10 now. So one more sub. Until another. Until a new emote. Or sorry, uh, one more so until we a pack opening. Yeah. There we go. Not a new emote, a pack opening. Yeah, five Would mana like slots just super contested in, in standard, just kind of in general. Um, all over the place. We're only 112 YouTube subscribers away. Awesome. We're getting there. I have liked all the Midnight Reapers in our deck. Like, Midnight Reaper is just a, an awesome card. And we've been able the to draw are my a lot of extra cards with them. So I wonder what they were keeping their land aware of on top for. If they have all this mana. Balance comes. Just seems I don't know, odd. Vraska is voiced by character actress Margot Martindale. Interesting. Alright, so finality. Would deal 10 damage to us if I play this other Midnight Reaper. I think I just wait. There's the blue mana. That's probably what they were waiting for. 
So big crisis. Ooh, hostage taker. That's a good card. That's a good card. You should see the look on your face right now. Beat me? No, our opponent My cannot beat a friend. Vivian um, ultimate, but to be fair, nobody can, so. They're down to one. Like finality, finality does wipe my board. Um, but the thing is, is after they finality, uh, we draw four cards and they just can't. They they won't be able to beat like the other stuff. So. Well, at least they had seven cards in hand at the end of the game. All right, final boss defeated. There we go. MTG bot's a little, a little pushy at times. So yeah, minus four, minus four kills indestructible creatures because... All right, 40 gems. Um... Because reducing a creature's toughness to less than one, um, it's not destroying it. And I don't know. I guess it just, like, you you can't have a creature with a toughness less than one, basically. Like, creatures just can't have toughnesses less than one. So, um, so it's, yeah, it's not, it's not like damage or destroying it. It just reduces the toughness, so it can't, so the creature is dead. Becomes too weak to exist. Yeah, there we go. So, that's a way to get rid of, get around, sorry, indestructibility. All right, so, um, final words about Jund Midrange here is that the, the deck felt, the deck felt good. I liked where we were at with this. Um, you know, Assassin's Trophy is my least favorite card, but it's still the kind of card that's, it's nice to have. It's good to have against like the aggro decks, uh, which could be kind of tough matchups at times. Um, hey, Eisenf. Yeah, Calcutta. I'm sorry. Yeah, you you did. Yeah, you had two really tough games there. So, sorry about sorry about those games, but good match. Um, yeah, I guess like next time I play this, probably just want to play the the same deck I, i'm glad that we have 26 lands now instead of 24 like we had before um and everything kind of did its role so yeah deck felt pretty good greetings from portugal hey calcada welcome um so there we go all right, so if you're watching this later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can get uh, access to all the other videos whenever they come out. You get that little notification, or I don't even really know how it works with YouTube, honestly, but it probably does something like that, I would assume, at least. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.